Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this second part, we are going to continue implementing the player movement. Basically, we'll add the run animation and we'll be able to switch between these depending on the state of the player, if he's moving or not. Also, we are going to flip it when we change the direction. So before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon. I appreciate that. And let's jump right into it. And now I'm able to move left and right using the left and right arrow keys or the AD keys. We just need to adjust the animations. So whenever we are moving, we need to change the animation to the run animation. And to do that, we are going to use the animator component. Basically, when we've created the first animation, Unity added this animator component and we have a controller property. Basically, Unity creates this by default when we create the first animation. And let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it animator controller. And if we double click on it, you will see this window and it's called the animator window. Basically, it has all of the animations like the idle one. We could also switch between different animations by adding transitions. We're going to add that right now. For now, we have this idle animation. Also, we need to create a run animation. And to do that, we're going to go under this folder and under the character, we have also a run animation. So the same thing, let's use this one. We need to slice it by changing the sprite mode to multiple. Then hit apply. And let's open up the sprite editor to slice these. I'm gonna select this slice button. Leave everything as default and hit slice. Then let's apply. And that's going to uh, slice all of the uh, sprites. Now we could create the run animation by dragging all of these sprites. So this is the easiest way to create an animation by dragging all of these sprites under the uh, hierarchy. And let's create it under the player folder. I'm gonna call it run. And let's hit save. And that's going to create this player object as well. So I'm gonna get rid of it. We just need the animation. And it's this one. And remove this animator controller as well. We just need one animator controller and let's drag in the run animation. Now we can switch between these by adding transitions and to add a transition, we can right click, then make transition to the run animation. Now we could transition from idle to run and also we need to go back. So whenever we stop, we need to switch back to the idle animation using the same method. And now to control these transitions, we need to add parameters. So we can go under the parameters tab and let's add a parameter. Basically to transition between idle and run, we use a float and let's call it speed. And then we can select the transition and from the inspector, we can change few settings. For example, let's remove has exit time so that we can switch immediately from idle to run. And then we need to add a condition. So in order to switch to the run animation, we can add a condition over here. So whenever the speed of the player is greater than 0.1, we need to transition to the run animation. And when it's zero, we need to transition back to the idle animation. And to do that, we select the transition, then make sure to remove has exit time. And under the conditions, we can add speed is less than 0.1. And now we could easily transition between these animations by changing the speed parameter. So in order to test it, let's go ahead and bring this animator window over here and let's change the size a bit. I'm gonna hit play. As you can see, our player is idle. And if we change the speed property to one, as you can see, he's running. If we give it back to zero, he's idle again. So we are going to change this speed parameter from the script. Basically, we are going to set it to the uh, absolute value of the direction. So when the direction is one or minus one, the speed is gonna be one. And the player will switch to the run animation. And whenever the direction is zero, our player will uh, go back to the idle animation. And to do that, let's go back to our C sharp script. So first of all, we need to add a reference to the animator so that we can change the speed parameter using public. The type is animator and let's call it animator as well. We are going to reference that from the inspector. 
and down here we can change the speed parameter using animator dot set float that's because the parameter is a float we can set it first of all we need to give it a name basically it's the name of the parameter which is speed make sure to copy that and paste it down here and then we need to specify the value so we need to change the speed property to the absolute value of the direction and that's going to change the animation accordingly using mathf dot abs for absolute value and let's pass in the direction so this is going to return the absolute value of the direction so if the direction is 1 or minus 1 this is gonna be 1 and it's going to uh, switch our player to the run animation and if we stop moving the direction is gonna be 0 so our player will switch back to the idle animation and I think that's pretty much it let's save the script then let's select the player we need to add a reference to the animator component so I'm gonna drag in the animator component of the player under this animator variable and let's hit play and now I'm able to move left and right using the arrow keys we could adjust the speed of the player by changing the speed variable I'm gonna change it to 500 and let's move again we just need to flip our player so as you can see he's always facing the right direction we need to flip it when we are moving to the left and to do that we are going to adjust the x scale of our player so if I change this to minus 1 as you can see he's facing left and if I give it back to 1 he's facing right so let's go back to the script so first of all we need to add a variable to check if the player is facing right or left using boolean and let's call it is facing right by default the player is facing right so I'm gonna initialize it to true by default then under here we are going to check if we are facing right and we are moving to the left we need to flip our player and to do that we use if the player is facing right and we are moving to the left using and direction is negative so whenever we are moving to the left the direction is gonna be minus one in this case we are going to flip our player by calling a flip function so we didn't create this yet so let's create it down here using void flip and in order to flip our player we need to change the x scale using transform dot local scale equals new vector 2 and we just need to change the x scale so if it's 1 we need to change it to minus 1 and if it's actually minus 1 we need to flip it to 1 again and to do that we use transform dot local scale dot x so the actual value we multiply it by minus 1 but for the y value let's go ahead and leave it the same using transform dot local scale dot y but also we need to change the uh, boolean is facing right so whenever we flip our player we need to reverse the boolean is facing right equals the opposite and we use this exclamation mark to reverse the boolean so if the boolean is facing right is true this is gonna be false and if it's actually false it's gonna return true so that's how we can update the boolean is facing right now let's save the script I think that's pretty much it I'm gonna maximize this window and let's hit play so by default the player is facing right and if I hit the left arrow as you can see he's flipped that's because we are checking if the player is facing right and we are moving to the left in that case we are flipping our player but if I move to the right again as you can see the player is not flipped that's because we didn't add that yet so here we need to check also if the player is facing left using this exclamation mark and we are moving to the right by checking if the direction is greater than zero in that case we need to flip our player as well so make sure to add these conditions so we need to flip our player whenever we are facing right and we are moving to the left or whenever we are facing left and we are moving to the right so let's save the script again and there you go we've created a simple player movement script using the new input system so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. Also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell icon. I appreciate that. And I will see you in the next video.